off the bench and fully earning his opportunity. And here is Jordy Barrett off a beautiful pop pass to open the scoring for New Zealand. His from Taylor for Ben Smith and to his inside is Aaron Smith. That is just magnificent. Yeah, so in the New Zealand Test match, um, I think the build-up to the New Zealand Test match, uh, from the beginning we felt the only real way that we could get the leave back is, is by winning and beating the, the top tier teams. You know, it doesn't help to always beat you know, teams that are ranked lower than us in the world. You know, we have to beat teams that are better ranked than us in the world. And that was one of the big goals of the year. We thought, uh, one way of getting the public and the supporters to believe in us again was a away New Zealand Test match. So um, we did really make that as one of the big games for us. And so asking the questions, how did we feel after 15 minutes uh, in the New Zealand game when they when they were up so so quickly? Yeah, I was I was I was, I was worried because uh, you know we were under the under the pump and and we got an injury with Lucanio. He broke his arm and he and he finished that that first half with that that, with that broken arm. Uh, um, yeah, so gladly the guys knew that was important and we won that test match at the end with a lot of luck. <laughs> Certainly we could have lost that test match as well. Like all 14 test matches that year, I think we could have beaten all 14, or won all 14 test matches, but we could have lost all 14 test matches. But yes, after 15 minutes, I was really worried in that, that New Zealand game. Tidy, uh, this is a chance here for Jus van der Beek. Inside to Erasmus brilliantly. Erasmus, Erasmus has got that touchdown. Yeah, the line up by South Africa, Malaj Andre Fenter. And this is a chance here as they get it away. It's you, Erasmus. Erasmus got the touchdown. It's to be our privilege to be there, you know. Uh, whenever we go out there, we must give 100%. Uh, At the end of the day, a player is a rugby player. A player is a rugby player. Some are 19 when they play for the Springboks and some are 35 when they play for the Springboks. So, in that range of players, there's different, there's boys, there's men, there's fathers, you know, there's, 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 there's people who's engaged, there's guys who've got three children. So, it's difficult to, to put a brand on a Springbok player and I think that's, that's something I would really like, we, we as a team are, are trying to embrace that. Listen, you're the team. Apart from the different culture of the Springbok, you know, and the different religions and the different makeup, and uh, a Springbok player's first job is to play rugby well. It's to train hard, to be an optimal professional, and eventually play the 18 minutes plus extra time on Saturday really well. Because at the end of the day, that's the thing you should be measured by. And then you grow into be a, a, a perfect role model and, and inspire people and, and do things well. For me, um, um, I never thought I would be a professional rugby player. I just wanted to play rugby always and I never thought the game would go professional and, and I was just lucky that the game actually went professional exactly when I finished my studies and you know um, I was starting to work. And I didn't have this big dream of playing Springbok, so I thought it was too far. You know? was two years before that I was only playing for, for Shimlas, uh, which was a varsity uh, team in Bloemfontein. So it, it's all different for all players, but hell, oh, it's, it's, it's something, the moment you, you taste it, you never want to give it away. Uh, um, but then, to be honest with you, and, and, and I shared it with the players the other day, and I myself certainly, about two years of my life uh, as a rugby player, but I was entitled, and I thought, you know, uh, uh, you know, I should be here, I should be picked. And uh, we had a great chat the other day with the players, and said, listen, there's no entitled player going to this World Cup, you know. I've been there, I've made that mistake, and, and it took a guy like Harry for you, uh, he was a Springbok coach who came in as a, as a businessman, as a Springbok coach, and he didn't have any knowledge, uh, and I know Harry will take it very well uh, if I say this, he didn't come in with this history of you know, Rasi Erasmus with this and that. He just came in and said, this Rasi Erasmus is a, is a windhut at this stage, and he just dropped me. And that was the wake-up call, you know. So uh, I think that's also something people must realise. Players also go through stages where they, they think they're the man at one stage, you know. So. Uh, but then when it gets taken away from you, you're like, oh well, uh, you know, I want that jersey back, I want to play for the screen box again. So it's the ultimate honor. When you stand there, when you sing that anthem, uh, you know, the players do it different. For me, I always look for, if I can find a little boy or, or 
somebody who looked at the other players doesn't have to look at me and, and try, try and see, you know, what, is, what does he look like and, and how, what does he see when he sees the anthem. Uh, and then after that, he went straight into the game. So, no, it's special, it's fantastic. It's, it's, it should be every, every boy oystering to one on the blackness.